Okay, my name is Hamish Fullside and uh, I'm from the Climate Foundation. I'd like to give you a quick tour of our biochar reactor for human solid waste that operates at a community scale. So uh, we'll start over here at what I call the wet end of the dryer. So please come this way. Okay, so quite a few people here at the moment. Uh, we see the, the input hopper here, which is uh, something we put together for the fair. Uh, currently we're feeding this uh, machine with a simulant, which is a, um, uh, actually a Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation recipe for uh, a proxy for human solid waste. And it's 70, 70 to 80 percent moisture content and uh, uh, appropriate caloric and uh, mineral content. Uh, so we use that in our demonstration through the entire system. So at the, the end here there is a, uh, uh, this is the beginning of a belt dryer uh, which takes the, the solid waste uh, through at a rate of about 100 kilos per hour. Uh, the belt moves uh, very slowly as you'll see and hot air is sucked through the belt, through the material and through the belt and exhausted out through these uh, odor control boxes, filter boxes on the roof of the container. Uh, the boxes are filled with uh, biochar, which is a highly absorbent um, charcoal uh, uh, substrate that, uh, that takes out the odor from the air uh, and is actually a byproduct of our overall biochar reactor process. So, should we try and get a quick view in the dryer here? Okay, there's a walkway, so we're going to go around. Excuse me, just a minute. we should go over there. So this will get a bit noisy, but we can walk through to the other end here. Um, we have a screw conveyor which uh, does some dewatering and uh, deposits and spreads the material onto the onto the dryer belt. This dryer was designed by one of our industrial partners as a scale down of an industrial unit for the drying of food products. Uh, we feel it's an appropriate technology and uh, has some unique capabilities that we'll talk about in a moment. Let's go to the noisy part. Fortunately there's nothing on the belt right now but you see the belt, you can see it moving Very slowly if you watch it, let's come up to the motor and we'll see the movement all there. Uh, this is the radiator and ambient air is being pulled through the radiator by exhaust fans which sit underneath, uh, underneath the top of the belt but above the bottom of the belt. So this is a... Uh, the dry end of the dryer. Currently we're just collecting uh, waste from the dryer. We don't yet have an automated transfer of mater dry material from the dryer to the carbonizer, which is the next stage. So this is, the dryer is designed to take material from 70% to 20%. Uh, sorry, excuse me, to 30% moisture, which our carbonizer can handle. This stuff is, um, is still a little wet, um, and uh, we're, we're still uh, in development of the, of the overall process, but that's dried material that's come out there. You can tell the dryer is moving by the spindle on top of the motor. Uh, the belt moves extremely slowly, 100 kilos an hour. Uh, uh, is, is the rate of transfer and the bed depth is designed to be about four inches right, so it's a smooth bed of, of material okay these pipes are transferring weight uh, transferring the hot water from our, our uh, heat exchanger unit here so hot water goes in on the uh, on the insulated pipe and is circulated around the radiator and the return comes back here. This column is our main heat exchanger. So this column is filled with packing material that provides a very high surface area. Okay, 
Um, so this entire column is filled with this material. What's happening is that the, the hot, wet gas is coming out of the carbonizer over here. Um, and this, this gas has two heat components. It has the energy of the, uh, the, uh, uh, from the temperature of the gas, but also it has the, um, uh, the energy represented by the water vapor inside the exhaust from the carbonizer. Have on? Okay. Um, so we're capturing the heat of condensation from that hot, wet air in this column. Uh, so that heat gets transferred from hot water vapor. Uh, we can see in a moment the temperatures here, uh, but they're typically going to be 300 degrees centigrade coming into the base of this of um, air that is saturated with, uh, uh, with water. And uh, that turns into hot water that comes through uh, and goes into the dryer. There's also the thermal heating of that, of the water that's circulating here from those same exhaust gases. So this is a key uh, uh, innovation um, in, in this kind of setup where we're capturing the heat of condensation of the wet fuel that's being partially combusted in the carbonated unit. Uh, let's see, go to the control system here. So this is the carbonizer. Currently we have a manual transfer of uh, material from the dryer into the carbonizer into these hoppers. This is not, this will not be the final incarnation. We're still at the uh, development uh, phase of this prototype. Um, here we have a fairly, uh, uh, actually an industrial uh, design that uh, controls both our input air, primary air, and our uh, fuel. Um, through, uh, the, the air is blown into the combustor carbonizer through here, and the fuel is transferred by auger into the, the chamber. We're able to automatically um, uh, monitor both that rate of fuel by the, uh, uh, by the engine control based on the sensors within the system. So currently we're measuring the reactor temperature, which you see is being around 800 degrees centigrade right now. Um, here we have a Stirling engine, which we're using to generate electricity. It's another component of the system. Uh, this requires um, fairly high temperatures to, to run at. Uh, we then have the heat exchanger column down there, which is 267 degrees currently. Um, we're, ultimately, the system is tuned to get about 300 degrees at that point um, of wet air going into the heat exchanger to provide energy for the dryer. Uh, and our, our water temperatures right now are still um, uh, are about 30, you know, 38 degrees. Um, so the system gives us very uh, fine uh, control over the various inputs and outputs, but also a measurement capability. We're able to connect via wireless and we take all the readings, all the temperature readings and our performance, put it in a database which provides analysis capabilities for our testing. Yeah, the output from the carbonizer um, comes out of this. We have a somewhat airtight container here. We're keeping this moist. So at the base of the carbonizer, there are augers that bring the, um, uh, the biochar out of the, out of the main uh, chamber. And again, this is under, under control. We can vary the rate of that. So our overall energy balance, we have excess energy in the system. And uh, that excess en energy could either be electricity um, from the Stirling engine or could be biochar. So we can dynamically change the rate of, uh, of output of those two quantities um, based on the energetics. So this is probably still quite hot, but <laughs> it's sharp. Okay.